a cloud of dust and a holly, Hal Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Indian companion Toto, the mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Lone Silver! Jonathan Steele was hundreds of miles away when his bank in Baker City failed. All but a few of those who had trusted the banker were wiped out. Some, in desperation, took their own lives. Others, courageously, sought a new start in life. Everyone blamed Jonathan Steele for the catastrophe. When Steele returned to Baker City, several weeks after the bank's failure, he found a lynch mob waiting to seize him to from the train. First he was bewildered. Then as he realized the mob's grim purpose, he shouted for his friend. Hardigan! He called for the jeweler, a man of wealth. Granger! First Benjamin Granger! Granger and Cardigan can't save you. Granger was one of the directors of the bank. Drag him along, boys. You know where to find the hangman's train. Oh. No, in the name of mercy, wait. Let me speak. We listen to you when we trusted you with our cash. Tom Beasley. Beasley can save me. Beasley can explain everything. Now, where is he? Someone go and get the manager of my bank. Forget it. He'll tell you you're making a big mistake. There's no mistake. We trusted you, Jonathan Steele. Trusted you and went broke. You lost all our money for us. No, no. I tell you, you're all wrong. Now, please listen to me. Please find my friend. There's a horse all set for him. Place him astride that horse. Here, Cardigan. Ranger. Beasley. I'll fix the news. Now, wait. Wait a minute. Here comes Beasley. Just a minute, man. Hold it a minute. Uh, Beasley. Beasley. Thank heaven you're here. Uh, hold everything, boys. No use, Beasley. We've decided what should be done with a banker that busts us. A condemned man is entitled to a last word. You can't deny that. We had a meeting. We had a regular trial before Steele came back here. The sentence has been passed. Uh, just, just give me a chance to speak. All right, Steele. You can speak your piece while we adjust the noose. Now, oh, boys, you won't need the noose. I see Cardigan and Granger coming. When you heard my story, you changed your minds about hanging me. Now, let me You stay right on that horse. As soon as you're through speaking, we'll slap him out from under you. I'm not worried. Now that Cardigan, Granger, and Beasley are here. Now, boys, I didn't mean for any of you to lose your money. I've arranged for all of you to get back what you've lost. I'm surprised that you haven't been paid already. <laughs> what do you aim to pay us with? Beasley... Why didn't you follow my orders? What orders, Mr. Steele? Why, I, I wrote you a letter. I told you to take the bonds and jewelry from my private vault and convert them into cash to pay our depositors. There was nearly a million dollars. What? what are you talking about, Jonathan? You haven't any private fortune in the vault. What? And you didn't write any letter to me. Easy. Easy. Why, what are you? Why are you lying? Granger will prove you're a liar. 
I wrote you a letter too, Granger. Now tell these people what I said. Jonathan, if you had a million dollars worth of bonds in jewelry, I would certainly know it as a director of your bank. You know you're not telling the truth. Yeah, In the yeah. name of mercy. Are all of you turning against me? Uh, Cardigan. Uh, Cardigan, you're not connected with the bank. You, at least, will tell the truth. Of course I will, Jonathan. I'll tell the people about the letter I sent you. What letter? Why, uh, Cardigan. Cardigan, I sent you a package of jewelry that I happen to have with me. I told you that Beasley and Granger would, would bring jewels from my vault. I asked you to cover everything with cash. So those who trusted me would be given their money. I'm sorry, Jonathan. I saw neither jewels or letters. What? You too, Cardigan. That's all, Steel. You had to say. Why, you, you false friends. You fiends. You devils. You'll pay. You'll pay for murder, Cardigan. And you too, Granger. And you too, Beasley. Slap that horse. You'll pay. You wait and see. Yeah. <laughs> Jonathan Steele's last words were a warning, but no one took him seriously. He had, however, been on his grave for less than a month when Cardigan, the jeweler, was found in his luxurious library with a bullet in his brain. I came as soon as I heard the terrible news, Sheriff. Yeah, I see you did, Mr. Granger. Have you any clues? Do you know who killed Cardigan? Yep. You do? I know, but it's mighty hard to believe it. You see, the murderer sent Cardigan a note. Signed? Well, here it is, signed by Betty Steele. Jonathan Steele's daughter. But she was at school in the East. Well, maybe she was. This looks like she's come back to Baker City. Now, you and Beasley had better keep your eyes open, Granger. Sure, if you don't think... Granger, I don't know what to think. Believe it or not, Mr. Beasley, there he is, sprawled on the floor, just like Cardigan was. Uh, it's incredible. It's a funny thing. Just two days ago, I warned Granger to keep his eyes open. First Cardigan, now Granger. Sheriff, Betty Steele isn't capable of this. Here's the note I found on Granger's desk, Mr. Beasley. It's the same as the one Cardigan. But a beautiful young lady like Betty... Well, let me could... read you her note. She says... Though you cannot restore my father's life, I shall call in the hope of persuading you to restore his good name. Signed, Betty Steele. Sheriff, has anyone seen the girl recently? No, I've had men looking for her ever since Cardigan's death. But no one has seen her. Well, this is her handwriting. Oh. And I was going to ask you about that, Mr. Beasley. I figured that you, as manager of the bank, would know Betty's signature. Oh, I know it as well as I do my own. And there ain't no doubt about her writing the note to Cardigan and Granger. There's not the slightest doubt. Mr. Beasley, if you get one of these notes, you'd better let me know about it pronto. <laughs> Why should I receive a note like this? Weren't you one of the three men that Jonathan Steele called on to save his life? Well, I... You, Granger, and Cardigan. Ain't that right? Uh, yes. The other two are dead. Beasley lived in one of the oldest mansions in the city. It was a huge three-story house set well back from the road amid a cluster of trees. A high wall surrounded the property. Two men stood near the gate in darkness. It was the Lone Ranger and Tonto who appeared from the shadows near the wall at three moonlit figures on horseback. Horsemen, turn this way. Moonlight and pace of girls. Yes. Betty Steele. Stay with the horses, Tonto. We're going to see what that girl has to say. Ah. Hey, look there. Hold it. talk to you. So Beasley has guards on duty. How long since the sheriff's men have worn masks? Well, if it isn't Skinner Meekin. I thought you confined your activities to gambling and swindling. I don't care what you thought. We came to see Beasley. Take us to him. And drag Richard. But who are you? How do you know me? Have you graduated from sneak thievery drag? I didn't think you had courage enough for anything else. At least I ain't afraid to show my face. You are. Oh, yes, Meekin. I'm terribly afraid. Look here. I sent him feebly a note. Betty, you admit that? Why shouldn't I admit it? I told him I'd call him. If he's afraid of me, you may accompany us with your guns. You enter that house, you'll be shot on sight. 
I shouldn't want that to happen. Shot? By who? Beasley has guards inside the house. The sheriff's men would hardly shoot me. Beasley didn't tell the sheriff about your note. Instead, he hired gunmen to protect him. He gave them orders to shoot on sight. They'll do it, too. They're real gunmen, not petty crooks like your companions. Now you see here. Be quiet, Lincoln. Take me to Beasley. He can't have me murdered and get away with it. In view of what's happened, I think he can. What do you mean? No one would blame him for trying to escape the fate of Cardigan and Granger. What? What happened to them? You don't know that they're dead? Oh, no. You are supposed to have killed them. Oh, no. no, not that. He seems to know a lot about it, mister. Maybe he killed them too, Meekin. He's trying to frame Miss Betty. You chose a bad line of procedure, Betty. But, but I had no... Very idea. poor specimens to help you. Perhaps Drag and Meekin took matters out of your hands. You can't put the blame on us. You must have looked under stones and rotten logs to find creatures like these, too. You wouldn't talk so free if you didn't hold guns on us. Oh, please forgive me. I forgot I was holding them. There. Now they're hosted. Are you happy? Why, you... Of course, there are only two of you. You'd hardly resent anything, I'd say. I'll be hanged if you can talk to me like that. You should be hanged. Steady, fella. Come on, drag it. We'll fix it. Great, I hope you try. No, no, don't fight. Now, at him, drag. Get back on your horse, sir. I'll fix it. You miss. Uh, I got one of his arms. Drag it behind him. Hang on, Meekin. I'll fix him. Thanks for coming close. No, Meekin. He only held one arm. Drag, come here. Oh, wait. Sorry. No. Get up, boy. That wasn't for nothing. Okay, Miss Hobby. Yes. Girl, get away. Meet Pat Silver. We'll follow her. Uh, <clears throat> be ready. Steady, big fella. Come on, Silver. Get out. Oh. Hey, Mr. Beasley. Those two men we found near the gate have got conscious. Oh, they have, eh? What do they have to say, Drexel? Nothing much. Did you find out who you heard riding away? We ain't questioned them yet. I told the other boys to stay with them till I got you. I thought you'd want to be on hand. Uh, well, take me to them. They're right here in the next room. We didn't do anything, honest, we didn't. There they are, Mr. Beasley. Make a look. The killer Drexel. Drexel? What are you doing here? Ask Mr. Beasley. Drexel and these other men are here to protect me. They heard a commotion near the gate. They went to investigate and found you two lying on the ground, unconscious. Drexel, do you know those men? Yeah. This one's name is Meekin. The other is Drag Richards. They're a couple of tin horn crooks, yellow all the way through. Find out why they came here. Right. You two heard what Mr. Beasley said, didn't uh, you? Yeah. Well, sure, we, we wanted want the we... true facts. Why were you hanging around the gate? Who was that knocked you out? Who, who did we hear riding away? Well, I, uh, we... Uh, I'll tell what happened. Go ahead, Drag. You tell it. Well, uh, Meekin and me was out near Conway Creek when we saw Jonathan Steele's daughter. You saw Betty Steele? Yeah. She was near a fishing cabin, saddle and horse. So that's where she's been hiding. We knew the law wanted her, so we kept out of sight and watched. When she rode away, we followed her. She met a masked man near your what gate. A masked man? Tell me about him. It was dark. We didn't see much of him. He spotted us and got the drop on us. Then he grabbed us and knocked us down. That's all we know. It must have been them we heard riding away. Now, look here, Drag. Why did you and me can follow the girl? We figured we might earn ourselves a reward. The law wanted her, and... Maybe you can earn a reward. I want Betty Steele and that masked man brought here. I don't know about the masked man, but we might find the girl at that cabin. Go and see. Drex will send two of your men with him. Right. Martin Jake. Yeah. You two go. Well, I'll right. pay handsomely to get the masked man and Betty here, where Drexel can deal with them. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scene, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Fatty Steele, accused of killing two men, lighted a candle in the little fishing cabin near Conway Creek. Then, with frantic haste, she began packing her saddlebags. She didn't hear the horses that were reined up some distance from the cabin, nor the soft footsteps of the men who approached the partly open door. She was aware of no one until the Lone Ranger spoke. Betty, now please don't be alarmed. You! Steady, you won't need a gun. Let go! There. I'll return this gun in a few minutes. You followed me here. Yes. You left Beasley's gate before we finished our conversation. Now, uh, you seem surprised to learn that Cardigan and Granger had been murdered. What of it? I was equally surprised. Thought you'd taken justice into your own hands. I was glad to learn that this wasn't the case. Why don't you leave me alone? If you hadn't interfered, I'd have had a showdown with Beasley. I'd have You'd been have able... been shot. Beasley would have pleaded self-defense. When did Cardigan and Granger die? Cardigan was shot four nights ago. Granger was shot two nights later. I was in Riverport on Monday and Newton on Wednesday. Oh, can you prove that? Easily. How about Meekin and Drag Richards? They, too, have an alibi. I hired them yesterday in Little Falls. You made a poor choice. I didn't ask for your opinion. No, it wasn't necessary to ask. Who are you, anyway? Why don't you mind your own business and let me mind mine? Because in this case, we're both interested in clearing your father's name. You are? Yes. I started for Baker City as soon as I heard what had happened to your father. Why? Because I knew that he was the victim of three faithless friends. You knew? I knew that he sent jewelry and letters here in the hope of keeping faith with the people who had money in the bank. You knew that? I also knew that Beasley received the jewelry in his letter. I'm sure Cardigan and Granger received theirs. How do you know? You see, Betty, I brought the letters to Baker City. I handed the jewels to Beasley. Then, then my father must have trusted you. Yes. Will you? Are you telling me the truth? Oh, I needn't ask. I know you are. Betty, tell me. Why did you hire a couple of crooks like Drag and Meekin? I, I don't know. I knew that my father's friends had betrayed him. I sent letters to all three. I guess I must have intended to frighten them. My plan was to call on them with a couple of men who knew how to use guns. I thought I might get confessions from Cardigan, Granger, and Beasley. Do you think Cardigan and Granger killed themselves because they feared exposure? No. Then who do you we'd, think... Uh, we'd better get after Beasley. If he dies... There will be no hope of clearing your father. Take a look. Come. Well? Keep your hands shoulder high. We'll let you have it. So you have found reinforcements. I'll make it. Looks that way, don't it? We got a score to settle with you. Now, uh, now whose side are you on, Drag? Beasley. Why, you double crossed I it. made a mistake in leaving you two, didn't I? You made a mistake hitting us in the first place. We ain't forgot that. We aim to get square. Save it. You two can talk all you want. We get back to Beasley. Me and Jake will cover while you take the gents' guns. Take the mask off while you're at it. Let's see who he is. Just one minute. Huh? An hour ago, you found that odds of two to one weren't good enough for you. Haven't you learned your lesson? <laughs> Big talk, eh? Let me remind you that the odds have changed. They're four to one now. To say nothing of the fact that we've got the drop on you. No, four to two, Drag. You see, four to two is the same as two to one. Four to two. <laughs> yeah, listen to him, Bart. He's counting the girl. Cut the talk and take his gun. I'm not counting, Miss Steele. I'm counting my friend who stands at the door behind you. Huh? You stand still. Hey, Redskin. I'll fix you. Oh. Good shooting, Tonto. Now I'll drop your gun, Bart. There. Thanks. Tonto, you keep Jake and Bart covered. I'll give Drag and Meekin some further personal attention. No, no. Wait, listen a minute. Odds of two to one, Drag. Just as before. Oh, wait. Please, wait a minute. Let me explain. You tell him, Miss Betty. Tell him we're on your side. Are you worms? I missed some of the last performance by riding away. I'm looking forward to a repeat performance. As a matter of fact, so am I. Don't hit me again. Don't do it, please. We give up. You got the drop on us. Perhaps you'll answer a few questions to avoid a beating uh, up. Oh, what do you want to know? Ornery yellow full cat. Call me names if you want to, but you don't know how he can hit. Who is with Beasley? A uh, killer named Drexel and two other guys. Squealer. Any servants in the house? I didn't see any. Did you, Meekin? I heard he sent them all away a few days ago. 
And there are just four men in that house. Drexel and his two men and Beasley. Yeah, I, I guess that's right. We'll tie these men, Toto. No, uh, he tie them. Betty, you yeah. might finish packing your saddlebags. What are you going to do? You sent Beasley a note. You promised to call on him. Well, we're going to keep that promise. Two hours, Drexel. Those men should be back. Take it easy, Beasley. Maybe the girl didn't go straight to the cabin. Maybe the boys are waiting for her to show up. Yeah, that's possible. Jake and Bart are good men. We can count on them. I hope so. They'll be back pretty soon. They'll have that masked man and the girl with them. It'll mean a great deal to me to get it. What's the matter, Drexel? I thought I heard something. Where? In the next room. Someone is moving around in there. You two keep your guns ready. We're ready. There he is. Oh, no. Don't move. Oh, that's good. Grab him, boy. Throw him down. Hang on to him. Get him down. <laughs> that's the ticket. Now, put this rope on him. Yeah. Came through that window. Yeah. What's up, Redskin? Why did you come here? Oh, me not talk. Oh, you won't, eh? <laughs> well, we got ways to change in your mind. Who sent you here? Me not talk. You'll see how soon you can change your mind. I'll just put this poker in the fire and get it red hot. No, no. You'll not do that. No? Well, maybe you're ready to answer questions. Oh, me talk. You let me go. We've got nothing against you, Redskin. You treat us right, and we'll do the same for you. Now, tell me, who sent you here? A uh, fellow with mask and girl. Those two. Why? Why did they send you? Them say, come here, start fire and how? Fire? Uh. Them say... I make plenty big fire. Set the house afire? Uh. Drexel, they wanted to start a fire so I'd rush out with uh, certain items. While well, they were waiting outside. <laughs> it would have been a smart scheme if it had worked. Make that Indian tell where we can find those two. Injun, we're going to give you a chance to save your neck. No, me not want any trouble. You said that a masked man and a girl sent you here. Uh. Are uh, they waiting outside the house? Oh, uh, not right. Climb over wall to get near house. Then wait at the southeast corner house. You heard that, Drexel? Go get them. We'll, uh, we'll have to leave you alone for a few minutes, Beasley. I'll be all right. Can you, uh, guard this redskin? Of course I can. Uh, he's tightly bound, isn't he? Sure he is. Come on, boys. We'll sneak up on those two outside. It won't be long, Drexel. Don't worry. Yeah. We'll go out this door. So you were going to set fire to my house, eh? You savage. I ought to teach you a lesson. I think I will. Uh, you plenty brave fella, huh? What's that? Me tied tight, so you plenty brave. Why, you... Hold it! What? Who got that gun, Beasley? You! I said drop it that's better. Turn this way, Tonto. Cut that rope. Uh, you reach it now. Yes. There you are. Why? How, how did you get in? The same door your guards used to go out. What do you want? You remember me, don't you, Beasley? I brought you a letter from Jonathan Steele. I also brought some jewels. Why? I never saw you before. We both know that's a lie, Beasley. You not only kept those jewels, you and two other men whom Steele trusted... Stole everything he had in his vault. Hand it over. Why, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Beasley, don't stall for time. It won't help. Betty Steele's watching. She'll signal if Drexel and his pals return. That Indian was part of a trick to get Drexel out of the house. Too bad for your sake that you didn't realize it sooner. Now, now wait Beasley, a if Drexel returns before I'm through with you, there'll be gunplay. You can probably guess who'll stop the first bullet. Now, where are the jewels and bonds you stole from Jonathan Steele? I, uh... Do you suppose I keep valuables in this house? If you don't, you'll certainly wish you had. Well, wait, Kimasabi. Fellers speak a red-hot poker to make Tonto talk. Good idea, Tonto. Uh, me put poker in fire. What? Huh? You'll get off easy, Beasley. You have to do no more than hand over the stolen property. 
You should hang. No, no. You should hang for the murder of Cardigan and but Granger. Betty Steele, perhaps with your help, kill them. The letters she wrote gave the sheriff that impression, didn't they? Of course. You heard the proposition. Uh, if, if the girl has the jewels, she'll leave Baker City. She doesn't get them. She'll take her alibi to the sheriff. Now, make up your mind and be quick. Well, I, I'll get the stuff. It's right here. I have a secret panel in my wall. It's a clever hiding place. Here's the package. Just as you handed it to me. There were jewels and bonds in the bank vault. What about those? Oh, very well. I know when I'm licked. Here you are. Is this all? Yes. Cardigan and Granger had a share of the loot. Did you get their shares when you killed them? Yes, I've given you everything. Thanks. Come on, fellow. Ah. You won't get far. I'll drop you before you're ten yards from the house. Careless of them to miss seeing this rifle. Put that rifle out. What? What? There's our man. Take him, boys. Sheriff, listen, I, I've been robbed. David BC. I... We came into the house as soon as we captured Drexel and his pals. You, you what? Miss Betty and the masked man suggested I come here with him. They figured you might admit a couple of murders. You're under arrest for the murder of Granger and Cardigan. Why, you... You've tricked me. Of all the... But I won't be taken. Stop him! Oh, good work. You, you shot me. I, I'm hurt. I, You'll I'm... live long enough to meet the hangman, Beasley. Maybe you'll see Miss Betty reopen the bank before you hang. Just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.